This video is brought to you by Vincero. Hey, brother! Jay, my favorite fight from the entirety of the MCU has got to be between Iron Man and Thanos in Infinity War. The creativity is just through the roof. Iron Man is going all crazy with his nanotech, manipulating things left and right to do this and that. And then Thanos is all like, all that for a drop of blood. And then I literally gasp and lose all the air in my lungs every time he takes the sword and jams it right through his gut. Ugh! would hurt so bad. But it's more than just the amazing choreography and the creativity used to really demonstrate the powers of both sides. It's this one-on-one -on -one match that we've been waiting for since Thanos first turned around at the end of the first Avengers. This is it, right? Like this is the heavyweight match that we've been waiting for. Iron Man, the one who kicked it all off and Thanos, the biggest bad of them all. This is the key struggle across the entirety of the MCU. Like all of the big overarching problems are directly related to actions caused by one of these two or a combination of them. And now we finally get to see them fight and the only thing better than the combat is the one-liners. You throw another moon at me and I'm gonna lose it. But by far my favorite line between the two of them is... You know me? I do. You're not the only one cursed with knowledge. It's like a quick four line exchange, but there is a lot of meaning packed in there. So today we're going to break it down and figure out just how Thanos is cursed with knowledge. <laughs> Guys, before we get started, we have to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Vincero. You guys may know that Jay and I have been wearing Vincero watches for several months now, and honestly, it has become like a complete staple of my wardrobe. I have one on me at all times. Jay and I both love our watches, and recently, we decided to get them for the girls. In fact, Beth was even kind enough to come down to the office and model hers for us today. Both Beth and Alice picked the gold mesh straps, which I thought was super interesting, but there's actually actually a huge selection of women's watches available and they make a fantastic Valentine's Day present. And the good news is using promo code SCB and the link in the description down below, you can get 15% off your order and orders placed over the next couple of days will still make it in time for Valentine's Day. The watches really are awesome. Jay and I wear them every day. They are modern and stylish and timeless and I highly recommend you check them out. Again, promo code SCB for 15% off your order. Use the link in the description down below. Okay, but back to Thanos and Stark. I said it before, but I think it's just so true that all of the major things that happen in this series are directly related to one of them, which is fairly interesting because a lot of the things that happen in this series are truly awful. And I think both of these would profess their allegiance to being peacekeepers, which personally I kind of find fascinating when you consider the fact that one of them snapped and killed half of the entire living universe. And the other one is introduced to us as nothing more than a super self-centered weapons dealer. Yeah, peace. I love peace. I'll be out of a job with peace. Like, are they just both completely delusional? And like, what is the deal with the relationship between these two? Like, what does it mean that Stark isn't the only one cursed with knowledge? It's a pretty complicated question, actually. And I think it's because Thanos is a pretty complicated character. I mean, the MCU hasn't exactly been famous for cranking out the most memorable villains of all time. Most of the time, they're just kind of forgettable, except for Loki. Loki was great, except was he even really a villain? I mean, yes, he definitely was, but Thor didn't totally seem to think so. Like he kept trusting him over and over and over again. And then I think by the end, he actually was a good guy and then he probably died. So there was that. Maybe, did he definitely even die? I don't know, not the point. Moving on. Thanos is a remarkable villain because he's largely relatable. He's not trying to seek out power or riches or interstellar dominance. He's simply watched his own civilization fall victim to overpopulation. And he had seen a solution, but ultimately backed down or was just simply unable to take action on this plan. And as a result, he had to watch Titan fall. Then after seeing his own kind destroyed, he's basically made a vow to do whatever it takes to not allow the rest of the galaxy's resources to expire. Now, all of this is critical because I think it helps explain just why Thanos actually respects Tony so much. Why he says, I hope they remember you. And let's just all agree that that's kind of a weird thing for a villain to genuinely express to someone he's about to infinitely mitten to smithereens. By the way, did you know that smithereens is spelt with two E's at the end there? 
Me neither, how fun. Anyway, fun words aside, they both have basically mirrored situations. Like Thanos saw something he could do did nothing and then felt responsible for it. Tony, on the other hand, has recognized many problems, done everything, and feels responsible for it. I'm being responsible, that's a new direction. He wanted to make a difference, I suppose. I mean, we won't know because we dropped the building on him. The question really becomes, are you more at fault if you know the solution to a problem and do nothing, or you attempt a solution to a problem and it goes wrong? It's kind of a major like ethical dilemma question, but I can tell you, Tony certainly feels the latter. Plus it helps ease my conscience. I mean, if you think about it, almost everything Tony has ever done has almost resulted in the exact opposite of what he was going for. He's first introduced to us as a weapons dealer trying to protect America, I guess. But where do we know those weapons ultimately end up? I saw young Americans killed by the very weapons I created to defend them and protect them. So Tony decides to no longer make weapons. It's a weapons company that doesn't make weapons. Well, at least not weapons that anyone else is allowed to use. He basically decides that he is the only one responsible enough to operate the machines that he creates. And so the Iron Man suit is born. But then almost immediately, it spawns a threat in the form of Ironmonger. My suit is more advanced in every way. He has barely invented the suit before it invites an equal and opposite problem. And so the cycle goes on. Every time Tony invents something to try to make the world a safer place, it lasts for about a day before he has to go off and fight his latest invention. Just listen to this conversation between Tony and Bruce. I see a suit of armor around the world. Sounds like a cold world. Tony. I've seen colder. Peace in our time. Imagine that. Yeah, sure. Good intentions. But what happens? Ultron. But don't worry, I can totally fix it. I'll make an even better robot. Vision! Who I'll totally never lose. Tony, you lost another super bot? I mean, what's the point of even putting a transponder on somebody if they can just turn it off? But useful as Vision ends up being, he's also the reason that Thanos himself ultimately it needs to come to Earth. Does anyone else feel like Vision's made entirely of vibranium and it was a little bit too easy to scoop that out of his skull? Me too! He also ultimately tries to reign in the Avengers by signing with the Sokovia Accords. But guess what that totally peaceful idea leads to? Civil War. This is of course in stark, no pun intended, contrast with Thanos. While Tony keeps building shields that end in disaster, Thanos is causing disaster to shield people from themselves. And that brings us back to our original question. How is Thanos cursed with knowledge? Well, he of course says this in conjunction with the idea that it's the same reason why he knows who Tony is, because he knows that Tony is also cursed with this. And I don't think that what he means here is that they just both got perfect scores on their SATs. I think what he means is that he knows that Tony is also someone who will go as far as absolutely necessary to protect his people. After all, going back to Avengers 1, Tony is the one who redirects a nuke through a wormhole and blows up an entire Shatari army. A loss that I'm quite certain Thanos, whose army it was, might have noticed and probably first turned him on to who Tony was. And going back to that scene on Titan, he may be empathizing with Tony here, knowing that with all of that knowledge and ability comes a certain responsibility of power. Does that phrasing not seem kind of familiar? I swear, if Tony says to Peter at the end of Endgame that with great power comes great responsibility, I'm going to lose it. Hashtag Uncle Tony, I'm calling it now. It kind of goes back to that dilemma we talked about earlier. If you are able to help, are you obligated to do so? It's kind of unfortunate that in Thanos' case, his conclusion is that the way to solve the problem is by wiping out half of all living people. Obviously not the right choice, but this is part of what makes Thanos such a likable character. He saw what happened to his people and he believes he has a solution and that is what he's trying to execute, along with half of all living people. But maybe more than anything, I think Thanos is afraid of Tony. Remember this line earlier in the movie? The hardest choices require the strongest wills. 
This is what he recognizes in Tony more than anything else, that he has the strength to make the hardest decisions, that he has one of the strongest wills, that he was willing to do whatever it took to defend mankind, something he maybe could recognize because of the lengths he went to to protect his own people, or I'm sorry, failed to go to to protect his people. And I think you actually see this in the fight he has with him later. After he's stabbed him, he still also goes to make the move to kill him. And the very idea that he moves to actually kill him is kind of crazy because despite the amount of killing he will ultimately do in this movie, it's not a characteristic that we've seen all throughout the movie. Yes, Loki, maybe, and Gamora, maybe. But everyone else he comes close to killing or could have easily killed and doesn't. Drax and Mantis shake it off no problem at all. Somehow. Peter is spared. Everyone in Wakanda he's totally fine with just knocking over. Tony on the other hand, I mean just, just look at this. He lights up the whole dang gauntlet. I mean what's the deal with the special treatment here? Because he is afraid of him. Even Tony basically mortally wounded is still a significant potential threat. You may call it respect or knowledge or will or whatever but bottom line is he tries to kill him, but does spare him in exchange for the time stone. And as we all know, this bargain has a lot of weight behind it because of who actually makes it, Doctor Strange. It would appear that whatever he saw in his lone victory condition, the one thing that is absolutely essential to victory is Tony. Because Tony is the counterpoint to Thanos and possibly the only one capable of defeating him. But even if he does, his track record kind of just indicates that something bigger and even worse will just come in its wake. Man, who do you think that's gonna be? Actually, I have a few fantastic ideas about it. But there you go guys, that's why I think Thanos and Iron Man are kind of foils of one another and two of the most critical components as to what is going to happen in Endgame. But for my question of the day, I want to pose you guys with the ethical dilemma. If you know how to solve a problem, are you morally responsible to attempt to help? Leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. Also guys, don't forget that today, February 7th, 2019 at 6 p.m., tickets will will be available for our first ever digital meetup. The link to that is in the description down below. Tickets will be available exactly at 6 p.m. The meetup actually starts at 6.30. There are a limited number, so if you'd like to join, jump in quick. It's $5 for one minute with us or $10 or three. During that time, you can ask us anything. It's just Jay and I and you talking about whatever you want. Plus, we can snap a selfie before the end of it. Again, the link for that is in the description down below. Check it out, talk to you guys soon. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like some more Marvel action from us, you can click right here to hear Doctor Strange's full plan or right here to figure out what's the deal with Thor's new eye. But Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.